We are live and on the air. Hey, yo, it's Omni Dog on Omni Bros Live with my fabulous co host from Comics Guide 101, Luis. Luis, how's it going? Hey, now. Hey, now. I'm good, man. I'm good. It's, uh, it's Wednesday, it's hump day. It was the eve before Avengers Infinity War. Oh, my and gosh. All the nerds were stern. <laughs> I've never seen people so excited for a movie. It's like time stops and mm -hmm. everybody wants to see this movie. I think it's going to be okay. <laughs> I think it'll be okay. Reviews say it's really good, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't think I'll be disappointed. I'm sure everything will be fine. <clears throat> so yeah, so this is, of course, as most of you know, this is Wednesday. This is the Q and A show. This is kind of more the laid back show where we kind of shoot the shit for a little bit. Usually ranges for about an hour and a half, two hours in that ballpark, uh, and we just have fun. Of course, we can't do this show without the lovely people in the chat, guys. Please. Please, 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 you are the huge part of this. We can't do this without you. So participation is key. Shoot us questions. We answer them. And I'm going to go, this goes without saying, but if you are a jackass, if you are a jerk, or if you're just a ni not a nice person and you spoil anything from Avengers Infinity War in the chat, I'm just going to instantly ban you. And I've already got Matt Miranda and Nick in the chat looking for it. So I'm not going to deal with it tonight. We uh, the movie comes out tomorrow. I've been waiting ten years to see this shit, and it will not be ruined. <laughs> On a more positive note, Jess, if I wanted to pick up some Avengers comics right before the movie comes out, I know it's a little bit late, but if I wanted to, you know, walk out of Avengers: Infinity War, and I'm like, man, I really like that stuff. Where could I order some good comics to get my Avengers fix? Well, if I were you, Luis. I would go to InStockTrades.com, where you can get up to 50% off your favorite collected editions with loyalty discounts that can tack up to 2 or 3% on that. Over $50 gets you free shipping in the United States, fabulous packaging, and the best customer service around. That's InStockTrades.com. InStockTrades.com. Love them. Order from them. They are fantastic. What do this I always say? What do I always say? How do how do your books come? You say they come like they are cradled like a baby. Hey, amen to that. So, Jess, any expectations for the movie tomorrow? You're not wait. You're not going tomorrow. You're going completely internet dark for the next few days, aren't you? Well, I'm 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 not going to be able to see it till Monday or Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to go internet dark because. Tomorrow, I mean, I've got Omni Bros to do on Thursday, mm -hmm. um, but um, I don't know. I've taken my chances in, in the past, and nothing's gotten spoiled. People have been really good um, for previous movies um, for the past three years, but this one, people seem, because we know something major is going to happen, mm -hmm. people seem really really walking on eggshells about spoilers on this one. Yeah, everybody seems really hesitant towards um, towards saying pretty much anything in regards to the story. Like, I know next to almost nothing other than Thanos shows up and he wants the stones. That's the basic premise of what I know. Mm, I remember reading the whole thing. Uh, but the benefit of my memory is that I don't remember it, so it's perfect. I remember liking the story, and that's about it. But I, I don't remember the details. Um, yeah. No, I don't remember the details, so I'll be surprised. <laughs> Everything will be a surprise to me anyway. Who do you think is going to bite it? I don't know. I Everybody's wondering mm -hmm. who's going to bite it. I mean, I think everybody thinks a certain character is not is not going to make it because a certain person wants out of his character role. Yeah, uh, but <clears throat> but I don't know. Um, I <laughs> I don't even want to speculate on who's going to buy it because I don't want to bu bug anybody. I don't want anybody to bo get bothered. Yeah, true, true. <clears throat> 
I'm I'm the same way. I only watch the teaser trailers for movies. Always works for me. I this day and age, it seems like with the trailers that are coming out, and then you have the TV spots, and then there's like 30 TV. They just ruin way too damn much of a movie. So I just I, I will genuinely just watch maybe one trailer, maybe two, and then go completely dark on it. Like I haven't seen anything outside of that last trailer that came out probably like a month ago. I didn't watch that. Oh, you didn't even watch that. No, I didn't watch that. You know what I haven't watched? And we should probably watch it over the weekend. And No, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> yeah, we should watch it and then make it a focus of next Wednesday's show is mm -hmm. Legion. Because we, we haven't. Yeah, we love it and we haven't watched it. We should really, you know, watch it and give like a 10 or 15 minute discussion on it. Yeah, it's a. I really want to catch up with it. I think there are what four episodes. I think there's four now. By yeah, the time we should go, by the time next week's show shows up, there'll be five. So we really need to um, catch up on Legion. You know what you need to watch? A uh, Handmaid's Tale. You definitely need to check that out. Oh, really? Yes. It's on Hulu. Yes, the second season just premiered this week. I the first season was my favorite show of last year. Re really really good i don't think i knew that it's really good chess i think you'd like it hmm. uh, do you know, do you know the general premise uh, i think i know the general premise yeah where it's like uh most of the planet the women can't have kids okay i don't know anything about it <laughs> oh okay <laughs> okay go ahead uh, okay, so super general premise. Most of the planet, uh, out of nowhere, most women on the planet, they are infertile. They can't have kids. Uh, there are a select few. There's just a few women that are fortunate enough that they are able to get pregnant. And they are called the handmaids. And they're forced to dress in like really conservative gear. And it's because of this that the government has fallen in the United States. And it's become kind of like this religious organization where religion is the law that a select few people are in charge. It's really, really fascinating and a really great show. I don't want to give too much away, but I love Handmaid's Tale. It was my favorite show of last year. Wow. It's okay. it's It cleaned out. I think it was like the Golden Globes last year. It cleaned out. It was really good. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I need to catch up on Legion first, and then I need to watch stranger things season two which i still haven't done i really need to catch up on television I, i'm doing better on books but i'm way behind on television and i'm i'm all caught up on mo movies that i care about so that's good but television's definitely taking a back seat to my reading uh somebody wants our opinion did you see the venom trailer i did i did see the venom trailer and what did you think of it I liked it. I, I it looks, it's I I hate judging movies yeah. based on just simply trailers because trailers lie a lot. Right. I've seen plenty of movies where I thought, oh wow, the trailer looks terrible, and then I actually go and see the movie and I'm like, oh wow, that was actually really good. I really dug the hell out of that. Uh, case in point was uh, what was that movie with Michael B. Jordan a few years ago? It was a found footage movie, Chronicle. Chronicle, I thought, was going to be terrible because it looked pretty like gimmicky, but I ended up really loving it. And then I've seen movies where the trailer looks really awesome, it looks really cool, and I hated the movie. So hmm. my general thoughts on Venom is it looks... They look like they've got the character down pretty well. Yeah, the CGI is a little bit rough. They still have time to polish it. Yeah. Um, does it look kind of generic based on the trailer? Yeah, it kind of does. But I'm willing to give Tom Hardy a shot, and plus, it, I actually dig the way that the Venom looks, that uh, Venom actually looks in the movie. And they kind of throw little tidbits in there of like how he talks, where he's talking to himself, and he's saying, we, and then you get the we are Venom at the end of it. I dig it. I dig it. I think it's going to be pretty good. Okay. I, I'm i hopeful. Yeah. I don't, I, it's a low bar for me because my expectations are so low. If this is even just average, I will go see it. I mean, if it gets so, like 60% on Rotten Tomatoes or something, I'll say, oh, okay, good. I'll go see it. Same. I think I think at best it'll just be an okay movie. 
And I'll be yeah. fine with that. Not everything has to blow us out of the park, you know? No, I, I, yeah. If it's just acceptable, I'll go see it. Yeah, yeah. I've seen plenty of shitty movies. Yeah. I confessed the other night to the other admins, like my guilty pleasure movie. Mm. Uh, my guilty pleasure movie um, series is um, the Underworld series because I love Kate Beckinsale. I like those movies. Those I know. Fun. I know. They're totally, I think they get like 10% on Rotten Tomatoes or something awful. <laughs> but the, the one before this previous one that got released that had the song by Evanescence in the very end, I kind of really liked a lot. And so I caught up on all of them. And I don't know. There's something just really cool about killing vampires, killing each other. Of course, I like the first two Blade movies, too. I like vampires killing each other. So, uh, I and I <laughs> then it got into a whole finger pointing thing about I like Twilight, and they were claiming that I like Twilight. And I'm like, whoa, hey, I didn't say anything about liking Twilight. I'd never have seen Twilight. I've never read Twilight. I've never done fanfic on Twilight. I don't know a thing about it. So leave me alone. No. So, uh I I love those underworld movies. They're fun. Yeah, they're fun. Yeah, you're not you're not looking for Shakespeare here, folks. You're not getting Schindler's List here. It's vampires versus werewolves and vampires versus vampires. It's just a fun shut off your brain movie. I love those movies. I think they're really fun. I still haven't seen the last one though. Uh, yeah, I saw it and I've already forgotten most of it. Avi G, I do not love Twilight. Stop yeah. it. Stop that, everybody in the chat. It's symbiote. Kate uh, Beckinsale. <laughs> we have a lot of Kate Beckinsale fans. Apparently. There's oh, a big Avi G, you that. are close to getting banned. I do not have the Twilight figures from Sideshow. You are going to get banned. <laughs> Why do you know that there are Twilight figures from Sideshow? Avi, Avi G said that. He's the one that knows that. I don't know that. Now, I will say that my daughter did have a Twilight poster of, uh, I guess, the werewolf guys on her wall in middle school. But I don't even oh, think, I don't think it's there anymore. <laughs> Hopefully not. Uh, question, do you think both Marvel Studios and Marvel Comics learn ever from their mistakes? And do they listen to their fans ever or just completely ignore them? I think they do. Where's that question? Uh, that was up there with Biggie Cheese. What what mistakes have they made? Oh, question. Do you think both Marvel Studios and Marvel Comics ever learn from their mistakes? And do they listen to their fans ever or just completely ignore them? Uh, yeah. Um, um, I think, they I think Marvel Studios does a better job of correcting mistakes than Marvel Comics. That's yeah. my opinion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that's for damn sure. Uh, I think they do a good job. Um, mostly, we're we're seeing it with the villain problem. Like villains were a huge problem for a lot of the Marvel films. It was always like the big one complaint. But then we started getting you know cooler villains. We started we just got Hela. We got yeah. uh, Killmonger and Black Panther. And it seems like everything that I've heard, Thanos is actually more than just a one dimensional villain. He's actually really cool. So I, I think that they do listen to their fans to a certain extent. Plus, you know. We control the money. Right. Ooh, here's one for you, Jess. So that's popped up. Uh, from Jesse Say What? Yeah. Don't know nothing. Well, first of all, Jesse, you don't know anything. That's improper <laughs> grammar. About the Gotham City Sirens, is the omnibus worth getting? Which would you recommend it, Jess? Yes, I'd show it to you, but I've already got it upstairs in my to read pile. Um, it is excellent. The, um, the art is good throughout, really nice art throughout the book. The writing is excellent through the, through the first two thirds. It's Paul Dini. Um, then Tony Bedard takes over and it drops off slightly, but it's not too bad. It's still your three favorite gals, uh, Catwoman, Poison Ivy, and Harley. Um, and there's hardly any bat. I don't even know if there's Batman in it at all because it's more about the three women. And um, 
I it's I think it's a fun book. It's just really fun and and really great. The problem with the oversized hardcovers was it was really tight binding, really tight binding. And so I'm really happy that the Omni, uh, I relaxed it and it looks much better. You can actually make out the art. It's not all squished together because it was a mousetrap practically. Hmm. Yeah, but what's, uh, I've ever had a really bad binding, like super tight. Yeah, that uh, that Hawkeye book, Hawkeye Hawkman book was oh, really that's tight. Notorious. That's a notorious one, though. If you guys get uh, the Hawkman on of us, you're gonna have to loosen it up. Oh, it's impossible to loosen up. I mean, I don't know. It's I I uh, lost that in the flood, and I said, forget it. I'm not replacing it. I'm gonna get the trades instead. Hmm. Uh, let's see. The first Twilight movie was 2008. Your daughter wasn't in middle school 10 years ago, was she? Hmm. No, she wasn't. She was in high school. Good heavens. So she had a crush on the guy in high school, um, whoever the head werewolf guy was. I don't know. She liked know. him. I don't even know. Yeah, it was, it's yeah. been so long since I've seen those movies. What is your favorite Stephanie Meyer book? Who's Stephanie Meyer? Uh, is she a comic book writer? No, I think I'm pretty sure that's the writer for Twilight. Oh. <laughs> Nick, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> I should have never brought it up. Oh, blind buy. Uh, nail biter. Good or bad decision? He Excellent to... decision. Excellent decision. Nail biter is awesome. I need to know how to, I need to finish that. Um, let's see. Is DC Universe by Alan Moore oversized? That's a good question. I couldn't find. I can't find it. I meant to have that out to uh, in my discussion with Fangirl about Alan Moore, and I have misplaced it, which is weird because that's a book that should be right in my little DC section, and it's not. DC is one of the few things. DC and Marvel are things that I have a pretty decent um, idea of where they are in the grand scheme of things. My guess is that it's standard. I don't think it's oversized. Vision is hardcover is kind of tight for me. Yeah, it's glued. I'm still shocked. Irredeemable. Oh, Gabe Infinity Watch is watching. I'm still shocked. Irredeemable Volume 5, a book out for one month, is out of print. Yep. Is it really all over the place out of print? I wonder I if they're going to redo it. I would imagine they have to. They're leaving money on the table if they don't. And there's some pretty solid stuff that came out this week. I'm looking at IST right now. There's a sleeper trade paperback book one, uh, absolute preacher hardcover volume three, Tom King's Batman volume five, Carnage on the bus came out, and Superior Spider Man trade paperback volume one complete collection. These there's some good stuff that came out this week. Mm hmm. Nothing mind blowing except for absolute preacher volume three that ends preacher. That's really good. But other than that, it's a solid week. Oh, Gabe is saying Irredeemable Volume 1 and 3 are also out of stock on Diamond. Hmm. Uh, so Descender is wrapping up with Issue 32, says Yavash. Uh, do you think Lemire will stick the landing? Yes, I, I do. So. Yeah, Lemire's, uh, Lemire's pretty good with sticking it, the landing. He's, uh, he's pretty good. I, I think the only thing that I've read by him that I didn't care for was Trillium. I couldn't get into it. Oh, and I didn't like um, that one where they were all out in the woods. Oh, what book was that? I really Plutonia? didn't. Plutona. Yeah, you hated that. Yeah, I didn't like that book at all. I didn't pour root beer on it. Somebody, <laughs> somebody went into the Omnibros live um, 
uh, comment section and said, I constantly pour root beer on comics. That is not true. I've only, in a, in a whole year, I've only done it to three books. That's the whole point of it is that I only do it to really, really terrible books. And I really haven't found that many books root beer worthy. Um, it's really rare that it happens. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, it, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be as effective as it is if I did it all the time. Yeah. I think when you when you pour root beer on something, it truly deserves it. Like it really has to be a stinker for you to not give it the benefit of the doubt. Because you're a pretty forgiving guy when it terms of in terms of certain books. Yeah, and if I don't like a book, uh, I'll give it to the library if it's something that I don't really care for. But mm -hmm. if it's so bad that I don't even I'd be embarrassed to give it to the library mm -hmm. or a young reader or something, then yeah, that's got to be an awful book. <clears throat> I think if we all put, I think if we all just got like a GoFundMe together, we can send you Nightfall. <laughs> it would be the most expensive waste of money. Okay, question. All right, all right. So let's say the group gets together and they fund a Nightfall omnibus to send it to you. Would you review it? Uh,. <laughs> oh. if somebody was i i don't want to encourage somebody to spend their money on a book i really don't want <laughs> but if people got together and bought it for me then i would feel forced to read it and review it but i mean you already know i don't like it so it's not going to be a good review you don't know you could always give it another shot jess you might enjoy it the second time well yeah i guess you're right it's possible you know? uh, unfortunately my memory is good on that one on, yeah. on why i didn't care for it and stuff but i i think you'd be better off if you all went in on a book that i actually like but that's not funny so i get it <laughs> i get sending me a book i hate <clears throat> Uh, he says, I read Outcast Volume 1 and liked it. This was Mr. Johnny Kidd. Does that make me a bad person? Yes, it does. <laughs> uh, I wish I liked it. I wanted to like it. I yeah. didn't pour root beer on it, but Luis and I are both linked in solidarity in the fact that we did not care for it. But I wanted to like it. It was pretty mediocre. Is that yeah. book even still around? Is he still writing that? Oh, yeah. Volume 2, Oversized Hardcover came out of that. I think it's Did doing it? well. I think people actually like it. Yeah. We might be in the minority on this book. I have heard next to nothing about that damn book the past few months. Mm. You know what I, uh, I'm catching up on right now? Uh, Southern Bastards. Oh, man, this arc is good. The new one? Oh, I haven't, I haven't read anything past the first volume. Oh, you haven't picked up anything past the first volume? I, that's all that's been released, I think. Yeah, I love the first volume. The hardcover, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So the first volume. Okay. So the fourth volume comes out in trade paperback in like a few weeks. So that means we should be getting a, a second hardcover within the next few months, I would imagine. Mm, that'd be good. That'd give me a reason to go back and reread the first one too. Oh, it's so good. I love Southern Bastards. Now, wait, that's Jason Aaron? Yeah. Okay. Jesse say what with an important question. I know exactly who he's talking about. Tim or let it be. That that must be a replacements question. So I will say I like Let It Be, I think is their best album, because it has I Will Dare on it. Oh. Hey, uh, Record Store Day was this past week, right? Yes, it was Saturday. I stood in line for an hour and a freaking half. Yeah, what'd you pick up, man? What, you mean you don't go onto Omni Dogs Vault and watch everything that I video? I did a whole five minute video on my record store day purchases. Dude, um, I'm staying away from YouTube as much as possible right now. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> um, let's see. I, I picked up a Catherine Wheel album, Led Zeppelin single, a Neil Young album, um, and a couple of others. Uh, that I can't really remember. Somebody in the chat probably remembers better than I do. They're right outside. I got about five records. <laughs> so there's going to be another one in the fall, and I'll be more prepared because there's a really cool record store um, in Old Town Alexandria that um, is is actually um, 
staffed by nice people, so I will go to it and get in line earlier and bring a chair. Because, man, my dogs were killing me. <clears throat> so, pretty good stuff then, right? Overall, yeah. Record store day? Yeah. I, yeah, I think it's fun. I yeah. mean, you say limited going? limited edition to a collector, of course, is going to get <laughs> them all pumped up and frothing at the mouth, and that's me. Then there's some colored vinyl, which I love, and... Oh yeah, this is right up my alley. I, <clears throat> I'm not going to spend the night. I know that Mike uh, uh, Curry, uh, who's sometimes in the chat, has spent the night before a few times. Oh wow! Line, um, that ain't for me. Man, I couldn't imagine st spending the night for. Ooh, no thanks. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, Jess, <laughs> what is next month's reading assignment? Oh, um, I think that Omar was talking about something. I'm trying to think what it was now. Have we decided what the next? Um, I well, I think next month's reading assignment is different than the review copies that we got. Yeah. Yeah. What? So I don't know what the, I don't know what the reading assignment is, and I don't I don't know that we ever chose review copies. Yeah. We, uh, well, I'm getting something. Oh, what did we end up getting? Uh, it was an X Men book and Warren Ellis's. Uh, I forgot the name of the. Book. Oh, Global Frequency. Yes, the hard. Oh, card. and then the X Men Grand Designs book. Right, those are the right, review right. books for this. Okay, one. those are the ones we're going to review. Right, are you getting? Are you getting that? Who's I already have them both, so I'll. I can. I can review them, or I can sit that one out. I've already got them. I mean, they already shipped, so I'm wondering who's who else is going to be on that show. Yeah, it's it's fine with me uh, if if I do or don't um, mm -hmm. participate in that. Whatever. I bought Enter the Dragon by the limited edition. Ooh, that sounds cool. Nice. Hey, Lewis, which is better, Century Fallen Sun or God Peace the Horror? Oh man, uh, those are both terrible. Those are both really terrible books. I'm gonna go with Codpiece Thor. Oh, now Nick Munoz and uh, Matt are plotting to send me Nightfall. Don't you guys dare! <laughs> Stop it. Send me something fun. You know, I'm telling you, if we got people in the group, we could pull enough people to get you a Nightfall omnibus. Oh, yeah, you could get enough people to get me all three, probably. And then that would really punish me. <laughs> Nick's right. It should be the consequence of uh, my losing a bet. Let's see. Nightfall <laughs> omnibus. Oh, they've got a damage copy of Volume 2 on IST, Jess. Stop it. <laughs> it's $50. Look at that. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, they've got uh, the, the Omnibus Volume 1 for 57 It's not bad. Or they could just get you the Trade Paperback New Edition Volume 1 for 17 bucks. <laughs> hmm. It, it's definitely going to get a root beer bath if they send you that. I know, and I feel bad about that. I, I mm. probably wouldn't do that because I know so many people love that book. I would hate to do that. Luis, Transmetropolitan <laughs> Volume 3 is still being released, right? No, no, it's not. It was delayed. No, it wasn't. You're going to lose that bet. You're going to owe me in and out. The question even if is, it's delayed, even if it's delayed a week, I still oh, win this. Absolutely. If it's delayed a week, I lose. It has to hit that I'm target. Sorry. It has to hit the date. And it's not going to. No, a year from now, you're going to be like six bets on a six bet losing streak. And this will be the second one. <laughs> this is going to be a theme in a year from now that Luis loses his bets. It's not going to come out on time. It's going to be at least delayed a week. <laughs> a week. Yeah. Oh, gosh. It's going to get delayed. Uh, I'm telling you, I, I can predict this stuff. No. 
no, it's no, foolproof. No, 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 no. No. Mm -hmm. no. I'm Omnidamus. <laughs> Omnidamus. Uh, <clears throat> somebody's saying get you a huge stack of uh, mangas, Jess. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Nick brings up, wait, what does Jess have to do if he loses? I forgot. What was your end of the deal? I forget now. You had something going. I did have you something. You had to remove something, maybe? No, I think I owed you... I wonder if I owed you Junior's like a burger dog from Junior's or something. I can't remember now. Now I can't remember. Nick's got a good point. I don't remember what the part, the the bet is if I lose. We need was to come up with something. Was I thought it, it was a burger. Yeah, I thought it was. Man, you know what? I'm, I'm going to fuck up some Junior's tonight. I'm going to get a Junior's burger tonight. <laughs> oh, that sounds really good. A Junior's burger. Ooh, You could ask Gabe. He had one when he was here. Oh, changed his life. I bet. They have Lay's potato chips inside. Oh, my goodness. Oh, they have potato chips on them, too? Yeah, they have Lay's potato chips on top of the bur inside of the uh, burger. <laughs> Not in the meat, but, like, you know. I don't think it was a Nightfall review. I, I think we may have just forgotten. I think we may have just forgotten to figure out what my side of the bet was. So we should come up with it right now. I, I mean, I'll review Nightfall. I'll review Nightfall. I'll review the first Nightfall omnibus if <laughs> Transmit does not come out on time. And otherwise, if Luis loses, he owes me in and out. You got to read it. The first omni omnibus. Exactly. Okay, that's the deal. That's a good deal. Okay, we're good with that. I'm, I can live with that one. It's going to get delayed, so I'm pretty secure in that. I've got an inside guy. No, you don't. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, I mean, man, now you got me thinking about a burger. Like, what is the perfect burger? Like, if you had to construct one, how would you construct the perfect burger? I don't know. Junior sounds pretty good with a hot dog and potato chips on it. Wow, yeah. So, obviously, you got to have the bun. Sesame seed or plain? Uh, I, like a, I like a plain... Uh, brioche bun. Brioche is good. Brioche yeah. is very good. I like I like a good sesame seed bun though. Okay. okay. Uh, and I like pickles and mustard and onions, sautéed onions on mine, fried onions. Same. Do you go for I the like whole, pickle? or do you? Uh, no, I'd rather have pickle chips on it. Oh, pickle chips. Okay. Huh. Okay. For me, you got to have sautéed sautéed onions. Yeah. I like to uh, throw in some sautéed mushrooms in there. Mm, that's a good idea. Put some sautéed mushrooms, ketchup, um, brown mustard. I like brown mustard. Oh yeah, it's really good. For Speaking cheese, of, oh yeah, cheese, pepper jack. Oh, that's good. I'm I'm usually okay with just uh, American, just something sort of moderate. That doesn't that I get the flavor from from, but not overpowering like cheddar, and I don't well, like Swiss cheese at all. Yeah, the the thing with cheese on a burger is that you can get a cheese that just is too much. It's like mm. that's all you taste if you mm -hmm. don't get the right cheese on your burger. You have to find a real good balance. Yeah, and do you like tomato or not? A little bit of tomato, not too much. I don't. I've come to like not like tomato on my burgers. Really? Yeah, I mean, because you can't really get a good fresh tomato unless it's the summer and it's grown, like, locally. Um, so I'll put, a, like, a fresh tomato. I, I don't know. I think it overwhelms the burger, too. I'll have a little bit of lettuce. Uh, lettuce is okay. But uh, I think a tomato just feels wrong in a burger, like, mouthfeel. It's like they're always too hard because they're never in season at a burger place unless you go to some fancy ass burger place where they grow their own tomatoes mm. how about a uh, mayo a little bit of mayo oh sure yeah. yeah i throw in a little bit of mayo in my burger too let me think hmm. okay now when you make the meat do you buy the frozen patties or do you you ground ground beef and you make it yourself um we buy ground beef and then make them up ourselves uh 
my wife and I liked uh, chopped garlic in ours. Same. Yeah, same. Yeah, that's really good. So we'll we'll chop up a bunch of garlic and, and mix them up that way. Onions and mustard in a burger would be good. Yeah. So the onions and mustard are already in the burger. Hmm. That sounds good. Well, I mean, you could you could ideally when you do the ground beef, you could throw in pretty much anything you want into it. That's the good mm -hmm. thing about ground beef. Mm -hmm. So if you want you could chop up little onions, just like really tiny square, and you could put it into the ground beef, and you could work it in there. Mm -hmm. It comes out pretty good. I've done it before. <clears throat> No, I did not buy the sound Twilight soundtrack. <laughs> Shut up. Paprika, paprika on a burger, really? Oh, huh. Hmm. Might have to try that next time. Ever had an egg on your burger? Mm-hmm. That's a good taste. I like that taste. I've never done it. Yeah, it is good. Really? Yeah, it is, it is really good. Hmm. Fuck! I'm gonna end up getting a burger tonight. I think it's great, and I want you to text me with a picture of you eating it. Absolutely. I want, to, I want to see a junior burger up close. Absolutely. Peanut butter and bacon on a burger. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, bacon. Bacon's good. Peanut yeah. butter on a burger? I don't know about that. And I'm, I'm a peanut butter addict. I love peanut butter. But peanut butter on a burger? Eh. I don't know. That might be too... Uh, I don't know. That's out there, man. It's, peanut uh, butter yeah, on it's toast good. is about as far as I'm going to go. Peanut butter and jelly burger is good. No, I'm good, man. No, now <laughs> you're just messing with us. Yeah, that does not sound that good. That doesn't sound appetizing at all. No, I don't even think a kindergartner would eat that. <laughs> now, there are just some things I think you should not put on a burger, like pineapples. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like you can you can mix and match a lot of things onto a burger, but some stuff like pineapples should be completely left out. Yeah, I'm not a fan of pineapple on my pizza either. I like Hawaiian pizza. Hmm, not a fan. And didn't we have like a huge uh, debate about this a few weeks ago in the group? Um. Uh, pineapple on pizza? I'm sure we did. Yeah, pineapple on pizza. Get freeze-dried onions, soak them in water, and then on a grill, flat grill, you can steam your burger on there, and it tastes absolutely... That sounds good. It does sound good. I love White Castle burgers. <clears throat> I know. Now, crystal guy. now I know that... Uh, I'm right because Gabe likes pineapple on his pizza. I like crystals more than uh, White Castle. Uh, I don't think I've had crystals. Pretty good. It's not bad. Is it a is it a franchise? It's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing as uh, as a White Castle. Hmm. Let me go get my charger real quick. Okay. Um, I have not watched the Krypton TV series, and I don't think uh, Luis has either. Is it is it good at all? Chat people, Krypton. Oh, Avi G's leaving now. He's dropped all his Twilight jokes in the chat, and now he's leaving. I wish we had crystals. You guys don't have crystals in Miami, but you guys have uh, Miami subs, which their gyros are amazing. Hmm. Krypton is awesome. I need to sit down and watch Krypton. I've heard really good things. I'm not doing peanut butter and jelly on a burger. There's some things that just do not belong on a burger. Yeah. No, you're... You're you're singing to an empty room, dude. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, onion rings. How about onion rings on a burger? Yeah, I've had that before with like barbecue sauce. 
Yeah, that's good. That's that's good stuff. <laughs> Matt Miranda, I want a Cuban sandwich. Cubans are good. No, I'm not trying it either. I'm, no, forget it. Peanut butter and jelly on a burger. <laughs> no, a seven-year-old would turn that down. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Yavash is really trying to <laughs> trying to salvage this. Try a burger. <laughs> on the he's really trying, he's really going for it. Hmm. I take musical opinions from Yavash, but not burger opinions. Krypton is good, but they just introduced a major Superman character from the comics. Is it Lobo? <laughs> I'm I'm just taking a shot in the dark. Uh, Sledge, yes, we do have Burger Five. Never been to it here though. We also have a Wall Burger, and I've heard that's not bad either. Oh, I've always wanted to try that. I've seen the show. There's a show. Yeah, they have a like a live, uh, not live. I mean, it's like a, I don't know what it's on TBS or AMC or something. It's called Wall Burgers. And it's all about the wall burger, the <laughs> wall burger. It's all, it's all about the wall, whatever. It's about those brothers. I can't get their names out now because I want to call them wall burgers. The Wahlbergs, Jess. Wahlbergs. Um, it's about them and, and the restaurant. Uh, does Marky Mark show up? Yeah. I think he helped finance it. Yeah, I've heard. Uh, I've heard they're okay. I've heard they're nothing to like write home about. See, for like, if the best burgers for me are always like those little mom and pop shops, those small little restaurants. They always go creative with that stuff. Mm. Or food trucks. You can't mm -hmm. go wrong with a food truck. Right, I agree with that. Especially with food truck tacos. Yeah. Here's a comic book question. You think they'll collect all grand design when it's done? That would be an enormous book. Uh, that I'm looking at it right now. That that wouldn't be that big. Um, it's a big book, but yeah, they probably will come out with the whole thing together because I think they did that with Hip Hop Family Tree, didn't they? They mushed yes. it all together. Yes, and those those collections of Hip Hop Family Tree are beautiful. Have you uh, seen those yet? I have not. No, they're beautiful little collections, Jess. You, you. I'm not. I'm not. I don't think you're the biggest hip hop guy. I'm so not. That's why I probably wouldn't get into it. Uh, okay, but they've got collected editions of Hip Hop Family Tree, and they are gorgeous stuff. Okay, so they didn't get mushed together. They're just individual editions. That's what it seemed. No, Hip Hop Family Tree are individual volumes, just in a box set. But they are beautiful little packages. And if you're a, if you're somebody that loves hip hop, uh, then you should definitely pick that up. Mm. <laughs> no, you <Nate>. can't. <laughs> I'm not bringing it out. I'm looking at it, and it's it's haunted now. Nemo, <laughs> fucking Nemo is not coming out until there's like no electronics in this room at all, <laughs> including my phone. <laughs> Oh, fucking Nemo. I saw that trailer that Giovanni put together. That was really good. It was that good. Was fun. Yeah. Where's Eddie's the, Burger Fi. What's Burger Fi? Uh, Burger Fi is a small chain that's really caught fire over the past few years, and it's basically like you build your own burger. Mm -hmm. From scratch. You get to pick the bun. You get to pick the meat. Uh, I've heard good things. I've heard I've heard pretty good things about it. I've just never gone to it, mostly because I live like ten minutes away from a juniors. So <laughs> I go there instead. I know. Don't forget, I want to see a picture of you eating juniors tonight. Chances are my fat ass is gonna end up at juniors. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lewis, go for the CEO burger with jalapenos at Burger Fight. It's amazing. If you like garlic, aioli, and like why you... Oh, man, you're selling me on this. Hmm. Uh, Jess, did you get Lemire's Grass King's hardcover? I saw it in a store. 
Didn't know it was that big. What's Grass Kings? I'm not familiar with it. There's uh, probably a couple of Lemire's books that I haven't read yet. Uh, Nick says Lemire doesn't write Grass Kings. He thought it was Matt Kent. Okay, either way, I haven't read it. Matt Kent has never really blown me away with anything he's written. Not that he's a bad writer, I just haven't read anything by him that's uh, really done it for me. Mm. Um, I, like, <laughs> I like him. Uh, Cuban Groove. I like this question, Jess. You want to take this one? About Animal Man? Yeah. How out there is it? <laughs> <laughs> Not as out there as Invisibles and Doom Patrol are, but... Um, um, it's, I mean, that's Riley's favorite book ever. So, I mean, that gets an 11 out of 10 from him. He, he raves about that book. I love that book. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty accessible. I think it's one of his, it pushes some, some, uh, some boundaries. I like it. Um, I, I like it a lot. I don't think it's, um, it's not as accessible as say Klaus is, but it's not as out there as, um, you know, invisible. So I think Animal Man is an excellent choice for even to start with Morrison. You could read Animal Man and be happy. Animal Man's a good introductory book to Morrison. I love his Animal Man run. It's so good. Yeah. Although I... Okay, so do you think Lemire had a stronger Animal Man book than Morrison? No. That's fair. <laughs> I don't think anybody's written Animal Man as well as Morrison has. I like Lemire's okay. I thought it was good. I, but... I loved his uh, Animal Man. Minus the uh, crossover. The, cr the, the crossover with Swamp Thing was kind of a pain. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to go to IST right now and put coyotes on my wish list. How many people ask if I, have I need to get that on my wish list right now? I have the first four issues on my uh, tablet. I just have to sit down and read it. Yeah, I I need to. Um, that I think last time we talked, he Omnipool did a good job on selling us on it. Mm -hmm. But I forgot about it right now. Is Descender done? Have they finished it? Um, no. Oh, Coyotes has three trades. No. Oh, wait. Coyotes or Coyote? Coyotes has one trade, but there's also a book called Coyote from it's Image Coyote. also. It's Coyote. Okay. Let's put that in the wish list. Okay. It's on there now. It's on there? Yeah. No back fees. <laughs> Coyotes is by Sean Lewis with art by Caitlin Yarsky. Uh, um, is there a new camera? Who is the most well-known or famous colorist? I think right now maybe Jordi Belair. I'm not good on my colorists. Um, I would say Dave Stewart. Mm, I do know him. I think Dave Stewart would probably take that. Because he's, uh, he's pretty much everywhere. He's worked on Hellboy. He's worked on a whole bunch of crazy stuff. His record is impressive. Luis, when are you going to listen to Jess and read Red Hood and the Outlaws Rebirth? What an excellent <laughs> question. <laughs> I need to sit down and uh, read it. I, I haven't even picked it up digitally. Uh, I plan to eventually. I just haven't gotten to it. Have you read uh, Action Comics 1000 yet, Jess? I have not. One, uh, 1000. No, 1,000. Yeah, it's 1,000. 1, yeah, no, I haven't read that, nor have I read 80 Years of Superman yet. 
Uh, I keep hearing mixed things about it. So I 80 have a, years I have or 1,000? 1,000. I, I, I really want to read it. I have it. Um, I just kind of want to read it mainly for Bendis' story to see how he does with it. Mm -hmm. But I've heard it's also not the best representation of Bendis' writing Superman because it is kind of a short story. So we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, I have a bunch of small things that I need to read. Uh, I should probably read them in, before I tackle Gotham City Sirens, but I want to read that so bad. Gotham I mean, City Sirens? Yeah. I've just been waiting for it for so long. It's good stuff. Oh, that's right. I just realized I have Thanos sitting on my uh, tablet. I have to read that. Oh, Lemire or Kate? Both. 1 through 18. Oh, yeah. Great runs. I kind of just want to start really with Kate. Because I know he picks up at 12, yeah. I think. Uh, uh, 13. He picks up at 13, and it goes all the way up to... Uh, I forgot where he... Uh, hold on. Let me look. I have it on my laptop also. It's really good. I like Lemire's run, too. 1 through 12. Those were really good. Especially with the movie coming out, everybody's talking about the big purple guy. Not Grimace. Mm. Grimace. <laughs> Mayor McCheese. <laughs> Mayor McCheese. Yes, that's a Ronald's Black Order. <laughs> He's got Grimace, which nobody knows what the hell he is. Mayor McCheese, the uh, Hamburglar. The Hamburglar. Jess, are there colored vinyls or other cool stuff for the Pixies? Uh, I think the Pixies had a record store day album come out. Something makes me want to say that. I feel like they re-released the first album. Hmm. Um, uh, but I'm not too clear on that. Yes, fun fact. Though Mike Allred art is amazing, he has color deficiencies, milder than color blindness. Huh. Well, that's interesting. Look at that. I don't know that. I have uh, I have color issues too when I see things. Oh, you do? Yeah, I have tr I have difficulty with certain colors like blues and blacks throw me off completely. Uh, oranges and reds sometimes too. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, me and my girl have gone into kind of not fights, but like little spats over things where I go, "That's black." She goes, "No, it's blue. You have color. You have like a color deficiency, like a color blindness. It's blue." And I'm like, "Baby, it's black." And we will just go back. <laughs> and pull it, it sucks. Um, Jake Fordrelli says the Pixies do have color wax. That'd be cool. I'd like to get their first album on colored vinyl. Jess, have you ever read... Did you finish reading Superwoman uh, Rebirth? Uh, yeah, I think I did. I've liked what I've read a lot. Let me see. I think it was three trades. Let me see if I have the third one. Superwoman Unity. Okay, no, I have not finished it. I've only got the two. I've only got two trades of it. Oh, you got to get to it, I, Jess. I don't think number three's been released yet. Has it not? I don't think so. Let me look. I think I'm still logged into in stock. Let's see. Volume one, volume two. Yeah, just two volumes have been released, and I liked them both. I don't think uh, volume three has been released yet. No, it hasn't. <clears throat> Thanks, Sludge. Lewis, color deficiency is more common in men because it's excellent chromosome. So your girlfriend is most likely right. <laughs> and she's a woman, so she's most likely right. That's very true. That's uh, that's very true. 
<clears throat> who is the shadow and who is the question? Jarney Powells. This one's for you, Jess. You like the pulp characters. <laughs> well, the question's um, a Charlton hero that got picked rewritten mm -hmm. uh, by DC, but the shadows, Lamont Cranston from like back in the 30s uh, radio, and he was uh, he had the power to mask. Uh, he had the power to befuddle men's minds uh, who were criminals. And he wore a kerchief and a hat and a kerchief that covered his face and had twin guns like the Phantom. Ooh. Have you ever read those Phantom comics? I used to read the comic strip, but I don't yeah. think I've read any Phantom comics. Did you ever see the Phantom movie with Billy Zane? Yes. Yes, I did. Uh, <laughs> I didn't hate that. Huh? I did not hate that. You didn't hate that? No. Oh, man. There's a... Ooh. I know. It's considered awful. I didn't hate it. There is a scene where he's... If I remember, this is years ago that I saw. This was probably like one or two years ago that I revisited it. There's a scene in the movie, if I remember correctly, where he's making advances on a woman, and he ends up saying, nobody refuses the Phantom. I don't remember that part. <laughs> yeah, and I just cringed. I was like, okay. That sounds awful. It's been a long time since. <laughs> Uh, the Phantom is a cult classic of sorts. Is it really? Wow. I remember the Shadow movie um, with, what's his name, Alec Baldwin. I didn't hate that either. Hmm. Ooh, I like this one. Biggie Cheese, thoughts on Infinity War reviews, and will there be an Omni Bros spoiler cast discussion? I would imagine next Thursday is... Yeah, I bet. Infinity War? Spoiler show slash discussion. That's usually how we do it, where uh, the week before. Late. Yeah, we usually wait till that Thursday, a week after, so everybody pretty much sees it, and then we can go ahead and talk about it. Yeah, probably and it gives you a chance. To go see it. Right, it gives you a chance to go see it because you hate you hate people. So <laughs> I'm not gonna deny that. <laughs> <laughs> You hate, in the correction, you hate watching movies with people, with little kids and stuff like that. <laughs> well, that's true, but I, I think you're right. I hate people, too. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which Superman comic are you guys most excited for? Frank Miller or Brian Michael Bendis? Um, well, I'm more excited for Bendis. Because I'm, Same. like, the only one that likes Bendis in the Omni Bros. Although, I think Gabe might like him. I like Bendis. Oh, okay. Luis likes him, too. Yeah, I like Bendis. I just don't like anything he's written in the past five years. <laughs> but I like him as a writer. I keep, I keep hoping Bendis will turn around for me. And I keep coming back to that abused relationship. <sighs> See? People like Bendis in the chat. Forgarelli. For Forgarelli? Jake yes. Forgarelli? Mm -hmm. I wish they could remake Doc Savage live action. They are remaking Doc Savage. Oh, they are? Yeah, Shane Black is doing it. Jimmy Owens, do yourself a favor and don't get into an argument with Cycle Cleveland about anything. <laughs> Yeah, they're doing. Uh, they're remaking Doc Savage, and The Rock is is Doc Savage. Uh, I'm not a big fan of The yeah. Rock. I like The Rock. I'm not a big. I liked him. I. Uh, I just. I can't take anything seriously that he's in. That's yeah, why I, I think yeah. him as as Black Adam is just a non-starter for me. I'm going to give him the shot. 
I mean, uh, Zachary Levi looks at least the part for uh, for Captain Marvel Shazam. So, and anybody complaining about the suit, that's that's about as comic accurate as you can get to that damn suit. So, yeah, you've seen the pictures, right? Yeah, I have. People complaining about the suit and stuff. I'm like, you cannot get almost more accurate than that to the damn suit. No, Jimmy Owens, the thing is, is that um, this the Psycho Cleveland's always talking about anything Howard Stern related. And so this Rob Zombie song is the Howard Stern song. And that's why he thinks it's the greatest Rob Zombie song. So just don't take it personally. That's just how Psycho Cleveland is. Sure. It's very true. <laughs> Uh, what's on our in stock trades wish list currently? I don't have one. Um, let's see. I have one. I can look at it. Ooh, go ahead. Avengers by Hickman Omni two, Batman mm -hmm. Golden Age Omnibus five, Black Beetle No Way Out Volume one. That came out and then went out of print, and it's coming back in print. Now Coyotes Volume one is in there. Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme, Strange Sorcerer Supreme, Omnibus, fine too. I hate you, sheesh. Uh, I put Generations on there because I like that Marvel. Uh, I like those Generations books. Um, Kaiju Max, uh, Volume Three. I want to get that. Legion of Superheroes, Silver Age. Can't wait for that. Good Miles stuff. Morales, Ultimate Spider-Man, Omnibus. Why is Marvel Masterworks Captain America Volume 10 on there for me? I don't collect those. Why would I have even hit that? I'll have hmm. to get rid of that. Um, Sherlock Frankenstein and Legion of Evil trade. Star Wars Hardcover Volume 3. Supergirl, The Silver Age Omnibus Volume 2. I can't wait for that. Then Omnibus. Weapon X and Wolverine goes to hell. Ooh, is one Wolverine of the greatest goes. names ever for a book. That Wolverine goes to hell on of us. Yes, <laughs> I've heard very good things about that. Yeah, Riley's really, Riley's really um, pumping it up. <clears throat> That's mostly where I heard good things about it. He keeps talking about it. Is anything? Am I missing anything that came out this week in terms of single releases? Did a new Killer Bee Kill come out this week? That's what I need to know. I think some people said that it did. Did you ever read the uh, the Archie by Wade? Oh no, I need to do that. Those I look both, really good. I wanted to know how that was, but I've never. It, it, uh, it was Wade and Fiona Staples did the art for the first few issues. Yeah. And I know you're an Archie guy, so I was wondering if you got a chance to read it. And when the hell are we going to get another Afterlife with Archie? Jesus. Those are good. I like those. I know, but they never come out. We are going to get a she We're going to get Hickman's Shield issues before we get another Afterlife with Archie. Let that sink in. <laughs> We're getting finally a completion to shield. Uh, Jess, I'm on issue 23 of Irredeemable, and it has turned things up like 10 notches. Yes, it does. Every issue just amps it up another notch. It keeps just building and building, huh? Yeah. I, I think it's... I love it from the beginning, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Oh, a new one came out today. I'm just looking over some of the stuff that came out. Hillbilly by Eric Powell. I definitely need to read that. Oh, yeah, the, I need to read that too. That's in the Goon universe. Right. At least that's what I've been told. 
Uh, What's that now? I still need to finish the goon. Actually, I do too. I re and I really like the goon. Yeah, same. Anyone been reading Oblivion Song by Kirkman? I have not. Here's okay, folks. Here's the thing. <laughs> Me and Jess, if you guys haven't found out, not the biggest Kirkman fans. Uh -huh. We think he's pretty mediocre for a writer. So when you ask us, and we read the newest Kirkman book, chances are we haven't. And chances are we won't. Bingo. I think he's pretty much a mediocre writer that just struck gold with the right book at the right time. Well, will, on DC. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say. Well, I will say I think the first 48 issues of Walking Dead are very, very solid. They're very good reads. And, and, I, it and I like Invincible. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're an Invincible fan. Yeah, I do like Invincible. <clears throat> yeah. Um, thoughts on DC's Books of Magic. I love Books of Magic. I've never read it. Oh, it's really good. Is it? I'll have to check that out. Yeah, it's Neil Gaiman. Um, and then they spun it off into a monthly series by Peter Nijberg or somebody, and it was really good, too. <laughs> Peter Nijberg. <laughs> yeah, with some, I don't know, some some name with extra consonants in it that weren't pronounced. and. Um, you just have difficulty saying you're just like yeah i'm not bothering with that yeah something like that yeah but that i don't hmm i wonder if books of magic the single the monthly series has been collected because it was pretty good it should be i can't imagine why it wouldn't be <clears throat> it's gaming well no the gaming issues like it was like a four issue mini series and that's been collected but then it went on to become a monthly series and it was pretty good too, and I don't. It's the monthly series by Peter Schneeberg or whatever that um, <laughs> that I don't know if it's been collected. Uh, I don't know why I laugh every time you say that. I'm I'm like a child. <laughs> Peter Schneeberg. <laughs> oh my goodness! So just uh, just kind of throwing it out there. If we wanted to pick up any of these books that we've already mentioned, where can they get them? Um, I would say that if you want to get collected editions, your best place to get them is InStockTrace.com, where you can get up to 50% off on your books, right? Two or three discounts. They have sales all the time. They have a damage section uh, for really big sales. And um, up to uh, over fifty dollars gets you free shipping in the United States. They have amazing packaging and fabulous customer service. That's InStockTrades.com for all your collected edition needs. Jess, that's too good to be true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a first big trade of the ongoing Book of Magic, but it's been a while and no second volume. Boo. Uh, they do have a trade of Books of Magic Monthly, at least one for sure, one of those fat vertigo trades. Okay, I'd read that. I remember liking that book. I'm trying to remember what volume did I leave off on in The Goon? I left off on volume three. I still have four and five to read. Did I? I'm trying to remember. I think it was volume 12. I think I finished volume 12. Oh, we're not talking. I'm talking the oversized big giant library things. Well, I'm just trying to remember the trades because I'm trying, because I'm going to pick up the digital volumes of where I left off because I really want to finish the series, but I don't have the time to go through like all 50 issues of The Goon right now. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where the hell did I leave off? I think I left off of volume 13. Let's see. Thank you, Amazon. Let's take a look at the interior art. Do I remember any of this? Okay, I'm going to say I left off of volume 13. 
Okay. Yeah, it was volume 13. Uh, while you're on Amazon, look. Will you do me a favor and look up Books of Magic by Peter Schneidberg? <laughs> yeah, I'll look up. See if it's in print still. Books of Magic. Oh, Books of Magic by Neil Gaiman. Books of Magic by Joe John Nay Reber. Book of Magic. Oh, that's it. Reber. Yeah, John J. Reber. <clears throat> John Nay. Yeah, Reber. it's in print. Well, it says here only eight left in stock. Oh, all right. So, huh, kind of looks like Harry Potter. Hmm. Uh oh, Jake Forgerelli, don't buy books of magic trade paperback. Why? They're, well, I know, but that I can, I just want to read the first few books. Should I still not buy it? I don't have the issues anymore. Snaidberg is an artist. He made, was he the artist on um, on Starman? I don't have. I don't think I. Where is Starman? Uh, I don't know. But no, I fell asleep. Harris was the artist. Oh, and Snaidberg did do Volume Five and Volume Six of Starman. That's who I was thinking of. I would not know. I fell asleep oh, with the first one. <laughs> I'm going to go back and give that another shot. I really do need to. Mm-hmm. I promise, Jess, I will. Mm-hmm. That's one of your favorites. Mm-hmm. Peter Schneeber. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, how his, that's what his name looks like. It kind of does. <clears throat> Lewis, the gun finished an arc. It did not end, and the first issue of the next arc was released, but no signs of issue two yet. Wait, what? No, I thought the goon was finished. I thought it was too. I thought he had finished it and moved on. Yeah, that's that's why he's writing Hillbilly now, and it's in the goon universe. Final issue. I'm almost certain that he finished it. Books of Magic is a series you have to read in total, not just the first few stories. All right, I'll wait until they put it out in total. It's not like I need a bunch of new books anyway. You talked me out of it. <laughs> That wasn't hard. He's not, wait, no, he's not wrong. They collected volume 15 of The Goon, which collects uh, all the way up to 53, and then an issue 54 came out. But he hasn't written any more? What? Hold on. Four. <clears throat> Hold on. Now you got me interested. Luis, Goon, the Theater of Bazaar is the first issue for the next arc. And he hasn't done anything since. So that sucks. I love Goon. It does sound like Eric Powell does whatever he wants, though. Like Satan Good. Sodomy Baby. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. What a great issue. Yeah, but Goon's been on hiatus plenty of times before. It's just strange considering that he's also got, he's writing Hillbilly pretty consistently right now. Hmm. I think issue nine just came out this week. Does it have any trades released? Hillbilly? Yeah, I think yeah. the first volume's out already. Hmm, okay. Let's see. Maybe I need to put that on my wish list and get to it in 2025. Forgarelli says, Goon was finished but left open. Hmm. Billy has two trades out. Oh, so Theater of Bazaar was a one-shot. Okay. 
Lewis, the Goon Theater of the Bazaar. Da, da, da. Is Black Sad still a thing that is coming out? I would hope so. Black Sad's art is gorgeous. Black Sad's great. I really like it. I also like Granville. What's that? That's another anthropomorphic detective type thing. Oh. By Brian Talbot. It's really good. Hmm. Cycle Cleveland, how, uh, how, what's the farthest you've ever biked, man? Yeah, that's a good question. How far have you uh, ridden your bike in one day? Yeah, he loves his. Uh, he loves going biking. He's one of those guys that's st that's in the middle of the road when I'm trying to drive. Right. <clears throat> and then they get mad at you when they try to cut you off. Right. <laughs> I hate cyclists. Why are we even talking to this guy? <laughs> cyclists are actually kind of annoying when you think about it. Yeah. Just picked up Planetary on your recommendation. Can't wait to read it. Oh, you're so lucky. I can read it in another, two years from now and I'll have forgotten everything. Just doing the review on it on Monday made me want to reread it. 140 miles. Wow, man. It's good shit. Shorty Larson, should I read Fatal or The Fade Out first? Fade Out. Is my Fade opinion. Out. Fatal no. is great, no. but... Fatal. You're saying Fatal? I'm saying Fatal. Good heavens. I love Fatal. I do too, but I think Fade Out is the one he should read. Fade so Out's you, have, you have differing opinions from us. Yes. So we're no help. Fade Out, Fade Out is great. I'm not, nothing to take away from Fade Out, but I love Fatal. Mostly because I love the horror aspect of it and that Cthulhu aspect of it. So mm -hmm. if you like that stuff, definitely pick up Fatal. If you're like more of a straight up murder mystery uh, set in classic Hollywood, then Fade Out is the way to go. Was Grant Morrison's run written during, uh, I think it's Animal Man, run written during his excessive drug use or before? I'm asking you about so many questions about Grant Morrison because I was scarred after reading his Batman run. Huh. <laughs> this is more accessible. This is more accessible than his Batman run. Um, gosh, I don't know. I I can't comment on. Yeah, his I don't know drug. anything about his drug use. You know, I joke around all the time, say he's saying he huffs paint. But <laughs> if, you, uh, if you read his uh, Animal Man, is pretty trippy. So I would imagine he was on something, but the way he writes it and the art and the overall, well. It's pretty stable until you get to a certain point. Then it goes really out there. So, but I think you'll enjoy it. It's more accessible than his Batman. Should they ever bring back Gotham Central? If they could get Rucka and Brubaker writing it again, I think they should. Absolutely. Although, although I don't know that Brubaker's ever going to go back to DC now that he's such a successful screenwriter yeah brew has got a lot going on right now man he's a successful screenwriter he's got the killer be killed you know those guys at image if they have a hit book at image they make more money than they do at with marvel or dc a lot more sledge i haven't heard of poison elves I'd like Bendis on Gotham Central. Oh, that'd be good. I think he'd write a kick-ass Gotham Central. He's a great crime writer. I'd love to yeah, see that. Um, I've been getting the powers. Oh, JLA. He was asking about Grant Morrison's JLA. Um, I don't... Uh, uh, That's a Riley question. Yeah. Morrison had stopped doing drugs by the time he started writing comic books, according to him, says Doomfella. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I don't believe that. Uh, since I'm not getting books of magic, sell me on Poison Elves, Sledge. Sure. 
it's an all black and white indie comic was oh too good um in black very, and white okay very 80s 90s indie <laughs> i joke joke uh okay poison elves i haven't heard of it Poison Elves is not very good. Okay to good. That's what seems. Everybody's saying it's okay to good. That seems oh, okay good. to good. Okay. Yeah. If it's just okay to good and Ford Drelly saying it's not very good. Well, gee, you guys aren't selling me on any, anything tonight. I'm usually a pretty pu big pushover. Yeah, they usually sell you pretty easily on books. Yeah, you just have to suggest it to me. And I'm like, oh, okay. They are not. They're not selling you on anything tonight. No, they're actively talking me out of it, which is probably pretty good. Do you guys like the Max? Have you ever read the Max? I've never read it. I haven't either. Is that the Sam Keith book? Sure. Uh, I have Empire by Mark Wade uh, for Jarelli. I just haven't read it yet. Uh, I don't think Luis or nor I got the Danger Girl anniversary special today. Although I do like Danger Girl. I do not. <laughs> Sledge. Nikolai Dante will replace Irredeemable as your best comic series. Hmm. And Empire is being recommended by Forgerelli. I do own that, so I should read it. I don't know about that, Jess. What? About, about Nikolai Dante? Yeah. Sledge is here every week uh, talking about it. Okay, here's some good news. George R. R. Martin says Winds of Winter will not be released in 2018. No, duh. <laughs> You're not is that a game his of latest 10,000 page bug? Uh, George R. R. Martin, he still hasn't finished Game of Thrones. We're still waiting on the last two damn books. And he's been writing this one since, fuck, uh, 2012, I want to say. Michael Lombardo, I have Punisher Platoon right here. I just got it. I can't wait to read it. I also can't wait to read Lazarus X Plus 66. Here's Action Comics 1000. Here's Gwenpool. Yes, I have a lot of comics I need to read. These are all the small things I need to just bang out in an hour. I'm fully convinced at this point George R. R. Martin will die before he finishes this series. Who was the famous writer that he died before he finished this series? Oh. And he had, um, he had somebody else finish it for him. Right, right, right. Um, time something? It was Time something, right? Um, it was um, that show. Oh, my, my uh, trainer loved that show. Um, Oh, and my wife wanted to see it because she has a big crush on the guy that is in it. Robert Jordan? What was the Wheel series? Of Justified. Justified. And, oh. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about um, Justified, the TV show. No, no, no. Wheel of Time. That was the series. Yeah, Brandon S Sanderson finished it. Yeah. What is it? Is it a fantasy sci-fi book? Yeah, I never got a chance to sit down and read it, but it was supposedly really fucking popular, but the writer died before he could finish it, so he had somebody else finish it based on the notes that were left over. Mm. Is it, it's Wheel of Time, I want to be sure. Hold on. never have enough time to read books. It's a gift and a curse. <laughs> wheel of Time. The Eye of the World Wheel of Time. Robert Jordan. Yep. 
It came out November 15, 1990. Huh. When the Two Rivers is attacked by Trollocs, a savage tribe of half-men, half-beast, five villagers flee the night flee that night into a world they barely imagine and new dangers waiting in the shadows and in the light this is wheel of time yeah Once again in the third age of the prophecy world of time themselves i don't know that seems pretty cool there's 14 books of it sweet christmas that's a commitment yeah i don't have that much yeah i don't have that much time to read Wheel of Time. I gotta plug my laptop in here. Turn my volume off. I don't have to give this a shot. So red. Oh, here's a good one, Jess. <clears throat> Omni Bros Live, have you all ever thought of publishing your own comic ideas slash stories? Hmm. Have you ever thought about publishing your own comic, Jess? I have not. I don't really. I don't have any ideas. Oh, really? I mean, I think you could come up with something. If you could write one comic character, who would it be? Harley Quinn. That's a good one. I could totally see you writing a real good Harley Quinn. <laughs> I'm serious. I think you could, you know the character well enough. I do know her, yeah. Dupe. <laughs> <laughs> Love Dupe. <clears throat> Just can make a fucking Nemo comic. <laughs> um. It might be fun to get an artist to illustrate our, our our greatest hits, like when I did fun. fucking Nemo. That'd be funny. That would be fun. For us, anyway. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> It'd have six readers. Charlie Popnecker. I would write the shit out of a Charlie Popnecker story. Herbie Popnecker. Oh, Herbie Pop. My mistake. No, actually, it was... Shorty's mistake. He wrote Charlie. Oh, Herbie, okay. big guy. How dare I disgrace my new god. <laughs> Jess, do you have the House of Secrets omnibus? I do not. That's what I'm on the fence about. Um, those 70s House of Secrets books, I remember reading them and then liking them as a teenager. <clears throat> and I just don't know how well they would have aged at this point. Mm -hmm. Bronze Age. Um, kind of horror stuff, monster stuff. Um, I just don't know. I I should look, I, what I need to do is find a copy of it in a LCS and look through it and see if I get charged up about it. All right, just let's uh, go ahead and call this in about five minutes, okay? Five minutes, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, you should read The Mighty by Peter Tomasi and Chris Samney, since Irredeemable is your favorite book. I've heard of that. The Mighty. The Mighty. And it has Chris Samney's art, yeah. I like Chris Samney, and I like Peter J. Tomasi. Samney's not doing anything right now, though, is he? Um, Wasn't he doing... Oh, no, I'm thinking of somebody else. I'm thinking of David Aha. Uh -huh. Or whatever his first name is. Um, I was thinking somebody, Sammy was doing a Burger Books thing. Oh, man, I wish. Since I have Empire in hand, I will probably read it soon. Uh, what's the Mighty? Let's see if in stock has the Mighty. The Mighty. <clears throat> I've got it. As the world's as the world's only superhero, Alpha One has become an icon of hope in uncertain times. But while po uh, the population is inspired by their savior from a distant police captain, Gabriel Cole, 
has gotten close enough to discover that Alpha One's plans for a utopia are more radical than anyone suspects. Twelve issues. Is the first issue a first trade out of print? I don't know, but you can get the uh, whole thing for about ten bucks. The whole twelve issues? Yeah. Uh, in stocks only got volume two, so they came out with a complete collection. There is a co complete collection on a competitor's site. Yes, I see. Okay. That sounds really good. It does. They're selling you on another one. I know. It's Chris Samney's art. You know what? I'm going to give this a try. It's Chris Samney's art. At, at the very least, it's going to look real pretty. Well, yeah, and Tomasi's a good writer, so. Oh yeah, definitely. He's he's kicking ass on Superman. Okay, let's see the mighty. The mighty. No, not mighty Thor. Okay, I can see I'm gonna have to narrow this down. Do you want me to send you a link? Uh, no, I'm just looking for it right now. There it is. Oh, it's a DC book. The mighty, or is it not? Who is that? Who's yeah? Who's uh, Peter Schneeberg wrote drew it too. What? I'm only seeing uh, Tomas, uh, Chris Samney. Um, John. Oh no, Peter Schneeberg did too. <laughs> now you really have to get it. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, All right, I'm checking this out. I think what DC did do it. It says DC in the little up in the corner. You guys have sold me. I'm checking it out. Oof, cold. I think I might check that out too. But I will read Empire first. Peter Schnaper. <laughs> Our new favorite artist. Oh, man. All right, Jess, I got to get going. Okay. Logan Hamill, I will. Be doing an overview vid probably tomorrow or Friday on uh, Gotham City Sirens. So thank you for saying you missed my haul and overview videos. I will try and get one out soon, like in the next couple days. Good stuff. Okay. Well, where can they find you, Luis, if you uh, are out in the Ethernet looking for things to watch? Uh, you can find me at Comics God 101 on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all those links. Uh, yeah, that's about it. I mean, as far as where you can find me, just one last time. If you want to get our books, where can we get them from? At InStockTrades.com, up to 50% off your trades, loyal to discounts, and up over $40. Oh, <laughs> Almost made it. Over $50 gets you free shipping in the United States. Great packaging, fabulous customer service. That's in stocktrades.com. Amen. Dot com. Dot com. That's right. You can look for the collected works of Peter Schneeberg uh, at instocktrades.com. Okay. And just where can they find you? Uh, they can find me on YouTube at Omnidogs Vault or at Instagram. Omnidogs underscore vault. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Hit that like button. If you like this show and if you have iTunes, please review us on iTunes. It helps get more exposure to the show. Please, please, please. It really means a lot to us. So we appreciate you. We love you. Have a good night. I hope everybody enjoys infinity, uh, infinity war. I might end up doing like a small video on here tomorrow after I watch it. Just kind of give you my general thoughts, but I'm pretty sure all of us are getting together maybe next Thursday as much as we can to uh, review the final film because you're watching it Tuesday, right? 
Monday or Tuesday, yeah. I have okay. to decide if I'm going to drag my wife to see it or go with my movie buddy. So more than likely, all of us will get together Thursday and give our real thoughts on it. But you might get a video from me tomorrow night, so pay attention for that. It'll be late at night. What time are you seeing it? 8.30. Oh, my God. You're going to yeah. be with a huge mass of humanity. Makes yeah. skin crawl. I'm getting there around 5 just to mm. make sure I've got decent seats. So we'll see what happens. Oh, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. I, so I may good. get reserved seats or something and see it on a big screen. Do that. I wanted to do IMAX, but IMAX has reserved seats, so everything is booked. I'm gonna probably end up watching it. I'm gonna end up watching it Thursday for sure, and I'm probably gonna do IMAX on Sunday. Mm. Sunday morning, first thing in the morning. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do reserved seats for it. While all the other church going folks are there, I'm gonna be in the church of Thanos. <laughs> Okay, right, everybody. Have thank a good night, everybody. You, thank you, Luis. Peace and love. Peace and love. Thank you, chat people. Fabulous chat people. Good night. Except for everybody bugging me about Twilight. <laughs>